Welcome, welcome, welcome to, well, it's Something. politics. We're all back. It's been it's been a difficult time, Ricky. It has it's been, been. a difficult time. Ricky played a joke on me earlier today. It's also been a difficult time for white men interrupting women. <laughs> so oh I'm really looking forward to uh, this particular show with the uh, girls from Hotix and trying not to get myself into too much trouble. But uh, so I reckon we play Mark was a Queensbury rules, so... It's okay if I interrupt you, but nobody else. But we are joined by, I, I, I will, I was going to say we're joined by the Catlins, Ricky and Adrian, but I'm just going to, first of all, I'm going to text. You, we can't I'm be gonna the Catlins, te- we have to be the Cats. Well, my name's the Catlins. Well, you, you, you chose to record in the same place. First of all, though, I'm going to actually just quickly text Ricky to check that I've got your names right. <laughs> So if you can just wait in the WhatsApp, yeah, Ricky, right, can you just okay. tell me what these people are called? Okay, wait there. Uh, right, he texts me. Yep. So I, I've never met these people before. What are their names? What is happening? I'm so confused. <laughs> uh, it gets worse. It gets worse. And then, so are you actually sending me a message? No, I wouldn't waste oh. the data on you. So, <laughs> right, so do you want to do you want to tell folk what you did to me in the recording we finished but an hour ago? We were doing a recording with a couple of guests that I've been organising. And Rick didn't find out the names of the guests ahead of time. So we met up with them. <laughs> and you were of them. <laughs> well, you knew one of them. So we met up with these people, sat down to record. And Rick says, yeah, there's a, an important WhatsApp message you need to look at. So I pulled my phone and looked at it and the message read, what's the guy's name? Because <laughs> so, I've got to do the introduction. So the guy's oh name's Jake. Gosh. So I reply with his name's Grant and sit back. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I had preempted this by saying to Ricky, you better be telling me the truth or you better not be winding me up. And of course, I fell for it. So well, we called him, I introduced him as Grant, our special, oh, no. our special guest. See, if you're talking uh, about mistakes, Grant, so did you hear the latest edition of 10 and 2? Oh, gosh. Because oh, Catelyn, no. Catelyn was busy recording, well, I do. Catelyn was busy recording the second half of our audio. And as usual, she put it in the wrong hole. So the, the audio just didn't work properly. <laughs> Are you doing? This is why I don't. T- I should not talk to you anymore. I swear. What? You put the microphone in the wrong hole so it didn't record properly. I did. It was too. Important. It happens. Cat, it happens. Cat tolerates a lot, honestly. Uh, it gives me memories of an early episode with you where. Oh God! I didn't want to go there. I feel like I have overall most improved audio. Most so. is true. Yes. Most improved. I would just like true. cleanest windows. I would just like to say I'm yet to make a mistake. Like, I have managed not to actually accidentally delete or not record an episode. Because you have to be supervised like a small child. (laughs) (laughs) I have drawings. Ricky's even put together a wee, a wee, like, a picture. Like a wee idiot's guide as to where to lay the cushion, where to put the phone, where to put the microphone. So we've now got a a, a picture lesson for how to set up. But the one I sent to Rick's just in black and white so he can colour it in when he gets bored. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) so let's talk Omega and Snoopy. No, no, we're going to be good. (laughs) Catelyn begged us. She said, listen, guys, I'll do anything for you if you don't bring up Snoopy (laughs) shit. (laughs) <laughs> so. And when we say anything, we mean we mean uh uh-uh. no. <laughs> I am not. All right, so we are taking over this freaking show because so far it's just turned into a regular Scottish Watches podcast where y'all talk hell of shit and the rest of us just sit around. So no, this is a hot X podcast. This isn't Scottish Watches. This is Scottish Watches ten and two and Adrian from Bark and Jack. So what is going on, guys? How is everyone? Is that your version of saying it's my turn to speak? <laughs> Sir, I, 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 just, I tell you, there's no, there's no flies on me. <laughs> oh my god! This is why we need show notes. We need we need a plan. No, we don't. Right? Did you see this, Christopher Ward? Because we don't want to talk about Speedmasters because they've got no water resistant because they're chronographs. And then Christopher Ward have a new watch with 600 meters water resistance. What's that all about? Yes. And it's phenomenal looking. Oh, look at the girls grabbing their phones <laughs> to see what the hell we're talking about, as if they know I about have watches. I've been busy all day. Excuse the hell out of me. Oh, no, Go I'm, to the I'm Scottish Watches time. Instagram account. So Scottish Watches Instagram account, you'll see all about it. Okay. And how much what? did they pay you to, up to do that post? Sorry, Adrian? <laughs> and how much did we're they pay you to do that post? <laughs> oh, no, they didn't pay us. Didn't pay us. That's, it's, they, they sent... We're in their secret club. <laughs> did you take that photograph? Or is it? Or they press? No, don't be ridiculous. That's a press photograph. It oh. wasn't even on the Christopher Ward website. But somebody has pointed out that this is a forty-two mil chronograph, and look at the wrist shot. 
So the question is, is that guy either got the watch around his ankle or a nine-inch wrist? <laughs> he's, because that he's a wrist bit of a sort gorilla. looks a little bit strange. I mean, I've got hairy arms, but this guy has <laughs> seriously hairy arms. I hope nobody dissects any of my wrist shots the way that you guys are right now. <laughs> Why? I, I don't know. I mean, y'all are like... The man's too hairy or whatever. No, it's actually the, the okay. size of the watch on the guy's wrist <laughs> looks absolutely tiny. It looks like, what, 34, 36 yeah, mil? And it's supposed to be a 42. Like... 42. So now that you guys are now up to speed on this, Adrian, did you not tell us that you didn't even know there was a new Snoopy coming out? <laughs> I, 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 I literally have no clue. I have no clue about what is happening in the watch world. It's, I, I Honestly, I, I get emails from like Watch Pro giving me updates on what's happening. Um, I read my own wound up that is written by um, <laughs> Patrick to find out what's happening in the watch world. <laughs> so no, I, I, I watch news is uh, barely, you no. Adrian, I've got some news for you. You've got a new range of leather straps coming out in a couple of weeks, in case you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have actually got a, a new NATO straps coming out in a couple of weeks. <laughs> Four weeks. Um, I don't like this Christopher Ward. I, 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 the Christopher Ward looks a bit um, try hard. What's wrong? Is the logo in the wrong place? <laughs> It doesn't have a logo, does it? It's just got their name. Unless they've I thought I saw the trident. Oh no, yeah, it doesn't. I think, just, I think it's probably got the trident on the second hand, has it? It has, yeah. Or the second chronograph yeah. hand. I'm not sure whether it's got running seconds or not. What do you think, Rick? Master of all. I like it. I like it. We'll go around the room. So Rick likes it. What do you like about it? Uh, that it's a water-resistant chronograph and it's a proper size. At why is all the hate on the Speedmaster water resistance? I'll talk about Omega, whatever. Why is 50 meters <laughs> that big of a deal? In all honesty, I don't understand so much hate. And people are so paranoid to wear Speedmasters. I think because of all this shit talking essentially about the water resistance. 50 meters is fine. You can swim in it. You can get you can get it wet. You can get it caught in the rain. What else do you need to do with the speedmaster? But do okay, okay. So you're a speedmaster owner, yeah. And you go to the beach. Do you wear your speedmaster in the water? I have worn my speedmaster in the pool. I haven't worn it to the beach because if I go to the beach, I don't even bring it. I bring dive watches. Um, but I mean, and typically you would have. First of all, I mean you. <laughs> Sorry. So first of all, like you have other watches. If you're really that paranoid about it, then don't fucking wear it or don't freaking wear it. In the, I'm trying to be. Eight. I'm so tired. I'm so tired. Then don't wear it in the water. It's fine. But I just I hate all the grief, to, all the grief to it. It's not a dive watch, so quit bitching about it. If it if it was a dive watch, I would understand it. But it's not. It's yeah, not marketed as is... a. Blah, 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 but it's not marketed Sorry, as a I'm dive speaking. watch. I'm it's speaking. Not... <laughs> <laughs> you let I'm me loving finish. it. This is good. If it was marketed as a dive watch, then I could understand it. But I have I have several watches that are 50, 100 meter water resistant. And you know what? If I'm going to go to the beach breathe, where Callan, I know I'm going to be in the water. <laughs> are you dead? Please quit interrupting me, sir. I am speaking, okay? You will get your turn. <laughs> Who's moderating this, by the way? My point. <laughs> no one. My point no with one. the Speedmaster. The point with the Speedmaster water resistance is they make a Speedmaster that looks exactly like a Speedmaster with 100 meters water resistance. So why not but just so make them what? all 100 no, meter water resistance? No, this is an actual, like, this is more of a dive watch. It, it has a very dive watch style to it, I think. But so what? It, oh, you're talking, never mind. This is why I need to take a nap. But you are talking about the other Speedmaster. Well, whilst we're talking about watches with poor water resistance, doesn't Panerai make dive watches? And isn't there like a Panerai that looks oh, like I'm a dive watch yeah. that has like 30 meters of no. water distance? Help me, Adrian. Help me. Help me. Adrian. I'll hold the coats. <laughs> 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 yes, Panerai make a 30 meter water resistance. 30 dive meters? Watch, what is, the hell is that? Yeah, it's At least the Speedmaster I, um, is 50. And- I, IWC make a 30 Stop, meter stop trying to deflect this now. Let's, let's go back to Panerai. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> d- d- does that Panerai have that little crown locking mechanism on the 30 meter water resistance? Yep. Pro- pro- Wait, yeah, on the 30 it's, meter water it resistance? It's what a, the hell is crime. that? So, <laughs> is it fair that? to say that's, that's a useless gimmick? On the Panerai. Yeah, they're all useless. Listen, so, so it's luxury watches. Fashion watch. All useless you say it's gimmicks. a fashion watch. It's a fashion. It's a, it is absolutely a fashion watch. Do I not strike you as the most fashionable person I, you know? I've never, se- I've never seen you, watch. so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> 
My point I was making to Catelyn is that Omega do make a hundred meter water resistant. But so what? What does it matter so if it was only fifty meter, meter water, water resistant? resistant. And I'll shut. Why does it freaking matter? <laughs> Quit your bitch. And if you want a more water resistant watch, wear a dive watch. But like, there, I hate it because I, I see people talk about it all the time. They're afraid to wear their speedmasters, just doing regular things. Just wear it. It's fine. Don't push the freaking chronograph while you're underwater. I mean that. I oh, feel so like there's, so there's little... limits. Oh my gosh. I, I'm done. I'm just going to, I'm bowing out of this podcast. I'm going with the original plan, which was if we talked about Omegas and Speedmasters, I was going to take a nut and catch it. <laughs> that was Snoopy's in particular. I have the text. Oh my gosh. Right. Okay. Oh. Okay. Well, anyway, that's Christopher Ward. I quite like it because obviously it's black and yellow. <laughs> yeah, that's right of your stream. Yeah. Wiz Khalifa. Every time I <laughs> see something black and yellow, that's all that pops in my head. So that's all. So, yeah, but Christopher Ward, obviously, this year they've done a hell of a lot of cool stuff. Every watch they've mm-hmm. released has been a little bit different looking. Yeah, good on them. And they're advertising on TV again, as Nick from Fear said. So, yeah, hopefully others will follow. Well, let's do a wrist check, because we generally don't do such things. And let's go for Kat, because she never says anything in these podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just here for the audio. That's it. <laughs> what have you got on? I've got on my uh, my new Omega Seamaster 300, the white dial okay. beast. Oh, I love that beast. Yeah. Storm Is that Trooper, what you're <laughs> whatever, whatever you want to nickname it. <laughs> it's not cool. the great white. Right, well, that was a, a very short and simple answer. So what have you seen yeah. in the last week then that sort of caught your eye or have you had any watches in for review the last couple of months? What's the sort of standout for you? You know, we actually got to see the new um, the new subs last week mm-hmm. and I've never been wowed by the Submariner, but I also haven't spent a lot of time with it. And I can absolutely see the the desire for these things. They They are incredibly made. The bezel action, like... So good. The best I've ever seen. Yeah. It, it just felt so good. Um, yeah, I was really, really impressed by them. Mm-hmm. Okay. We've, we've got quite a few things in. Man, I can't even think. All the watches. The, the Oris is really cool. The, um, which one? The, 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 <laughs> the one that we can talk about, which <laughs> the, is the Roberto. The, the Roberto, yeah. Yeah. The baseball. Um, that one's really pretty. I like that one a lot. Oh, baseball. Another favorite <laughs> subject for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Is that the American series? Yeah, that's the American series. <laughs> mm-hmm. Good stuff. No, and it's, uh, it's, it's lovely. Good. And uh, Catelyn, what are you wearing? I have stolen Tyler's Hamilton Day Date Pilot. So that is what I'm wearing today. Did this used to belong to you? Uh, no, I bought it for him originally because he's all, Interstellar was always his favorite movie. So yeah. I bought it for him because this was before the Murph was ever available. And um, he was, I mean, he was little, but I got it at a steal. So there was, I figured he'd grow into it. And now that he's grown into it, I just wear it instead. <laughs> so. Sounds good. And what have you seen coming through? It sort of caught your attention. I so while we were at um, Brinker's when we saw the Samariners, I did check out the Orange Sherbert Zodiac, and I was way too tempted for a very long time <laughs> to go mm-hmm. ahead and purchase it. But then I remembered it has the blue numerals, and that drives me nuts. So that saved my wallet. Um, what else? There's some new stuff coming out that we can't talk about. That's really exciting. That I'm very excited to check out. Um, we won't tell anyone. <laughs> Apparently, people don't trust you in embargo. So. <laughs> you say that as if I've just come home and sent you pictures straight away of something I wasn't supposed to. <laughs> Are we still talking about watches? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, but what about you guys? What's on, uh, uh, Adrian? What are you wearing? I'm wearing a Hamilton as well. I've got the uh, Club. Archie Mechanical Field Watch in white. Which I was given. I which is really love nice. that watch. Cat had it, <laughs> of course. Had <laughs> had it, and it was it's so nice. Yeah, super. I like cool. the love white. It. So who gave you that? A chap called uh, Ben Brexworthy. He runs uh, Wristworthy podcast. No, not podcast blog. Uh, and I was I asked to borrow it, and then he ended up giving it to me. And he gave you a watch as well. <laughs> yes, good. Glad to hear it. Rick, what are you wearing? Well, I've. I've just taken off the Hanhart Desert Pilot that I was wearing for the show we've just So they actually asked you for this Island. back and you're complying? I'm complying because they want it back. What did they threaten you with? So, they, they're, well, invasion, I think, mm. but uh, that's German. Did you way. happen to see the post on our Facebook group? 
where there was like an old submarine had been kind of found that was about 10 years old or something and yeah. somebody absolutely <laughs> slaughtered you. Okay, it's not a submarine, it's a spy boat and it's about the size of a canoe. So yes, these are these are spy boats. Are canoes bigger key... in Scotland? Serious question because that photo looks like it was a regular size like ship. <laughs> yeah, it looked quite large. No, it's, they're, quite, they're, quite, they're, quite, they're quite small, these things. I mean, okay, it is bigger than a canoe, but it's not like the size of a ferry. So a normal boat could hit it and not know that it hit it. Because mm. they're just so... What you're looking at, if you're looking at the same picture, as I recall, is it's basically just a row of solar panels uh, on a flat surface. Like, a, like one of the rowing boats that you would use to row across the Atlantic, but they sit quite low in the water. And they're used for surveillance uh, for tides and fishing and stuff but occasionally used to spy and one has washed up on the Scottish shore I think one washed up a few years ago in Ireland as well uh, or was caught in Ireland in some fishing gear but do they know where it's from is it um Russian no they don't <laughs> well the company that makes these things is American but it has been known recently that some political leaders in America have increasingly close ties to Russia. <laughs> so it is entirely possible that maybe they did sell one to the Russian. Look, Kat and I are just trying to figure out how to get to Scotland. That, that was our goal. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We're, we're really well, trying. There, appear to be sp- there appears to be spy boats leaving regularly, so you could just go down to the naval dockyard. I and, could be a spy, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm in like black hoodie and I, I could totally be a spy. No. Yeah, that's all it takes. Just put a black hoodie on and <laughs> jump down. That's all I need. Right? <laughs> You're recording this podcast barefooted. You cannot be a spy. <laughs> Uh, life. Anyway, so the reason we're talking about this is somebody went onto our Facebook group and posted up and said, is this part of Rick TikTok's Ponzi scheme or something? And the first reply was from Angela and she replied with, maybe he had it in for review and forgot to send it back. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, the hand heart's going back. It's a really cool watch. I really do like it. I, I would try to keep it if I thought he'd get away with it, but it's quite an expensive watch, so it's going back. Are you going to actually do a review? No. Yeah, no, no, I've got a review. I've got, I've got, I've got the, the opening paragraph in my head. It just takes a while <laughs> to, you know, I've got to let these things percolate rest and cogitate. Percolate, that's the word. Yeah. When the next generation is out, he'll be able to do a review on the previous just so people can really compare it yeah i i see i see review. the madness <laughs> absolutely yeah mm. regularly did we ask you what you were wearing no we did not did we, we don't care but i'm wearing, you wearing? the z loss that we get sent in it's nice i saw that yeah me. so what did you think then i've obviously spoken about it on one of our shows what did you think for 399 dollars it's not a bad shout to be fair yeah uh, i don't think i've got the same problem as you have with it rotating around your wrist I think that's because my wrists are quite square and chubby. Yeah, so, it's like putting a watch in a pillow; it just kind of blends in and falls in between all the <laughs> the fat cells. But no, it's like that photo. That what's the Instagram photograph of the guy with like the thirty-two mil day date? You know, it's so tight on his wrist that all the fat's going over the sides. That's on there somewhere. That'll be in our Facebook group somewhere. No At Rick TikTok on Instagram. Yeah, probably. Probably. probably yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely loving it. Couldn't believe the price. Mentioned this in one of the lives that we did. Uh, I thought it was far more expensive than it was. Yep. Can't really knock it at all. Really good watch for the money. So, have you seen that Tag Heuer have actually produced a nice monocle? No. <laughs> is, that a, is that a limited edition red one from a couple of years back? Let's, let's, move, let's move on then. <laughs> They've put the steel bracelet back on the monocle and it actually now looks like a cool watch. Oh, I see it. Are we following along at home? <laughs> Everybody has to look it up at the same time. To be fair, this came out today. I've, I've been on Instagram for five seconds. Uh, yeah, I like this a lot, actually. Mm-mm. Like no, it. nope. No, I don't like. I don't know. It's it's the same struggle that I have with like the JB Champion style bracelets and like Forster who does the bracelets now. Like where it's so narrow at the end link, and then the watch case is so much larger. I don't like that. Yeah, I, don't I like want that. to like it, but I don't like it. Mm. So. Yeah, I mean, if this watch didn't have this whole Steve McQueen thing going for it, would anybody care about the tag or Monaco? I don't no. mind it. No, oh, cat's just like mm. nope. Nope. I don't mind it. <laughs> They were no, really quite bulky. Like that. That's that bracelet. Yeah, I don't mind bulky most of the time. Though I am starting to go down and it's like square bulky is so different. To yeah, me. I don't have anything square. I don't like it. <laughs> you just keep talking amongst yourselves. It's fine. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> well, nobody else was talking, so we're just gonna have our, our little conversation. We know not here. to interrupt Southern Bells. We know that. <laughs> I love, by the way, that you guys referred to us as Southern Bells in your last podcast episode. I was like, oh, yeah. Cute. And adorable. <laughs> we brought uh, that cute and adorable a couple of weeks ago, I feel you like. You did. I heard it a couple of times. Took a break yeah. for a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
to notice. Been a while. We're we're bringing back trailer reference. No, we're not. As well. <laughs> nope, we get told not to do that. <laughs> That's so 2019. Uh. <laughs> so what else has been happening? Let's uh, find out what Adrian's been up to. Um, oh, I don't really know. I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing in life. I'm trying to figure out where things are going. Well, how's the strap business coming along? <laughs> oh, that's coming along amazingly. That's that's going really well. It's one of those weird things. It's it's um, it annoys me that we sell out so quickly because we've we've sold out of most of our straps. But it's that's going well. I've just recorded a video on the Apple Watch. Right. By the time this goes out, this episode goes out, the video will already be live. Is this a new one? Yeah, the Series Six. I like it. I'm keeping it this time. I think it's because I've got to the point of being so unhealthy that I kind of feel like I have to start doing something. <laughs> and this nags you. It kind of tells you. It does. Uh, you, I. You've been a lazy git. It- Get up yes, off your ass and I do something. Hate it. It's rude. And I got a. It's rude. <laughs> it, it's really it is. Rude. It is. It is on the edge of being rude. But yesterday, I got a little um, kind of badge for walking. Walking? Did you see? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to celebrate uh-huh. the wins. I don't know what it was for. <laughs> yeah, I went right over his head that one. <laughs> oh, I see where you went with that. Ah. <laughs> but no, I, I, I like this, and it's got really cool faces now. You can. Have, you've got this GMT face, which I think, and there's a dive bezel. And you just, you got this constant dive bezel. Oh, hi. And you I tap it. dive bezel. And then you just, it starts a 60 second, uh, 60 minute countdown. It, it's just cool. I like it. And good. the charge yeah. is good. Battery's good. Excellent. Can we go back to that name thing? Rick, did you full on really confidently I address f- him as I Grant? I full on confidently introduced him <laughs> as this is Monica and Grant oh, from the Blue brilliant. Company. <laughs> And I knew, I, listen, I, I knew when I asked Ricky what, I knew when I asked Ricky, what is this guy's name? Because no one's introduced me, that there was a chance that he would give me the wrong name, which is why I checked and I chose to believe him the second time. How good was my poker face? Your poker face, to be fair, it was pretty, it was pretty good. And, and did you keep that as I, the only intro? As, as the intro? Yeah, yeah. Oh no, we then just introduced him. We just called him like We just different names every time we spoke to him. You? Yeah. Did they correct you? <laughs> yes, they did. They did. <laughs> they did. I know, like, I oh. never correct anybody. And I think it's just like being Southern, like, we don't correct people. So, like, if you called me whatever, I would just go with it. I, I think I called you out when you when we first did a podcast. Um, right. When I called you Caitlin. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I know you. But, like, regular people, they call me yeah. Caitlin or Kathleen all the time. And I'm just like, okay, hi. I could hardly make out what you were saying because you're shit audio anyway. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> So yes, I fully, I waded in, welcome, welcome, welcome style, straight to the intro, and Ricky had given me the wrong name oh, for the please guy. Please keep that in. in oh, please is. keep that in. Oh, it'll stay and, in. And oh, absolutely. Little, the whole, the, explain the joke. The joke, because I think that's... Oh, no, we do. The joke goes right the way through the show. Amazing. It'll not be out until the close of the end of this 22nd month, of October. There is, a, there is a brand new watch featured in it, yep. but we'll say no more about that. Mm. Well done, Rick. You're learning. <laughs> Look at y'all keeping secrets. You've all got me this reputation for no absolutely zero good reason. Right, you said you were going to give us a monologue about this, so give us a monologue about why Rick is to be trusted. Because I am. Good monologue. You, you, <laughs> you, 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 Let's just call it that. I don't want to listen to Rick's monologue. You have all given me this reputation, Who which I do is not deserve. You all? Now, admittedly, admittedly, well, okay, y'all have given Who? us this reputation. We've not done anything. We don't talk you, about you. You have a you, you don't have even a going exist chat to us. So that's in not. our little WhatsApp group, oh, I more than exist to you in our WhatsApp group. Uh, the <laughs> the giving me this reputation. Now I admit it might be because I have also given you all, all other reputations, Adrian. I'm really sorry. What the rumors will get round, but there we go. <laughs> so anyway, we are to be trusted. But there we go. Honest, honest, Gov. Well, we haven't really got an agenda with this show. There was no bullet points. There was nothing and everybody knows. Yeah, but I'm just explaining for the slow ones at the back. (laughs) (laughs) You need to do it in a southern accent. I know, or an Italian accent. Why don't we take an idea that Adrian had? I know, we're hopeless. Uh We're absolutely hopeless. So let's talk about playing confidential phone calls on uh, on, uh, recordings on podcasts. It wasn't a phone call, to be fair. It was a voice note. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. 
Wait a minute. I'm getting accused of breaking stuff here and leaking stuff. You're the ones that put private messages what on the, your uh, podcast. Can I say <laughs> that the group chat is like mutually assured destru- destruction for sure. Yeah. <laughs> like, we all know way true. too much about each other. <laughs> but no, the uh, for our one year podcast and we play. First of all, oh, that oh, it took oh, us um, like 20 minutes to find that oh audio gosh. file. It was like, way, we way were, back. We were really dedicated to, to doing this. <laughs> So, oh man! Oh well. And Rick's pranks have not got any better since. <laughs> so, I mean, true. I thank God that was the only hot X prank because it was the worst. Yeah, but I, uh, but I would just stick up for myself here because your colleague across the desk <laughs> from you there, looking all sweet and innocent, was not as sweet and innocent as she made out. She in that knew episode. about it. I did know about it, and but... the minute it started happening, I was like, "This is not a good idea." I think I probably texted Cat early that morning. It was like. <laughs> Like, because we, I mean, you're like the first person that I talk to in the mornings and the last person I, you're my relationship. Pretty but, much. <laughs> but yeah, I uh, I think anyway. like you knew from the get go that I was having a, a crappy day. Ricky knew like the, from the night before, I think we were on the phone. And then there's that voice note. And I was like, <laughs> man, if I leave you on red for more than 20 minutes. Yeah. I legitimately trouble. got a little scared. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm so political and like my responses like I want to tear you down without you th- knowing that I tore you down <laughs> I want you to apologize for me for something I did wrong I have seen your messages okay. you've obviously taken a lot of handy hints from call her daddy good day to you <laughs> sir I was the OG of that thank you I'm like mm. 10 years older than that girl is so yeah. um, 10 years yeah. more experience are they like super young I don't know like 20 something really did you see that what's her name is having her own podcast now the dark Sophia one. is right. yeah awesome. Sophia is is launching her own podcast now oh that'll be shit I mean to be fair I'm not saying that it's not crap anyways but <laughs> it's entertaining at least Oh, that was awful. Oh, this it is was what I wanted to do. Awful. This is what I wanted to do so badly, and I'm sure you've probably heard this by now. But Rick, is this the lyrics? Have thing? you heard? Mm-hmm. Have you heard the song "Wap Wap"? <laughs> have I by heard the song "Wap"? Wap Wap. Yes, you but have. No, I think it there was a story explode. about this. Have you heard the uncensored to, version yeah. of the song? <laughs> Not the, there is like, a podcast called, I think out. it's No Such Thing as a Fish. Have you come across that? No. no. Podcast. <laughs> All right. Okay. You need to listen to that. It's very, very good. It's, but, uh, Adri- it's, it's by the guys that do QI, Adrian. Oh, you and right. Ricky will know of QI. So it's the QI team that do that. And they did, I'm sure it was that show, they did a, like a live... Rick, can you send a taxi for Adrian of... so he can get closer to his mic? <laughs> <laughs> That's better. <laughs> they, they, uh, they did a live playing, I think, of it when one of them had never heard it to gauge reaction and to that's what i yes. wanted to do with you but we never got you this whole to thing it. together <laughs> i really wanted to see your reaction <laughs> or i want it was that or i want to you know how you get those videos of like like famous people or or elderly people reading like really terrible like rap lyrics and things like that like inappropriate lyrics i wanted you to read the lyrics Right, a okay. live reading. A Let's live do it. reading. Um, right now. <laughs> pull up the lyrics. Let's do it. Yep. <laughs> no, no, not happening. <laughs> not <laughs> happening. No, yeah. no, 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 no. There is a yeah. line. That line is a dot to you. <laughs> it's, it's, it's sing along with Catlin time. <laughs> <laughs> sing along. <laughs> there will be no sing along. There will be no karaoke. Or Kathy To be fair, I don't think that I would love that song anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but also, can we discuss that I can't make macaroni and cheese anymore? Like every time I do, it's it's not the same anymore. Why is this? You've clearly not listened to the song, and I'm not gonna. Explain no, I've listened it to it podcast. once. That was enough. <laughs> I watched the video and thought, okay, obesity is a big thing in America, but that's fine. <gasps> Rude. I just don't get how she does all that stuff with those nails, but that's a different story. <laughs> how do you type? Uh, I love this that this episode is now turning into talking about Cardi B. <laughs> this is amazing. Well I done. got this topic uh, all day. I could talk Cardi B. So there is uh, that. Well, speaking yeah. of things that we want to talk about, Adrian, you'd been messaging back and forward about things that piss you off. Why don't we reach out about things that piss us all off then? <laughs> yeah, sounds good. I don't know what this is. <laughs> what was pissing me off? 
<laughs> no, you said. Adrian Rick. seems like he's being set up. No, no, Adrian's <laughs> not being set up. Adrian said he's to us. Like, uh... No, no, no. Let me take you back a couple of weeks. We did an episode where we called out. Oh, what was it? It was people wanting money oh, for reviews. Oh, yes, let's talk about that. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Right. Yeah, yeah. Hit us with it. So, was that about paid reviews and things like that? Is that yeah, it was about? like buying yeah. reviews and all the rest of it and paying for reviews. Yeah, well. Uh, and this is quite... Especially strap companies. <laughs> Especially when you're not making and selling them yourself. <laughs> They're not laughing, Ricky. <laughs> They're not laughing. Oh, no, cat shoulders are going. <laughs> I, think I think that's a different... Oh, oh. Sorry that, that went over my head. Sorry that we are very transparent about sponsorships. Oh, we are too. Just that's listening. It's all, around, um, it's all around people getting paid. <laughs> this episode is, is unofficially sponsored by... <laughs> So that it's, it's all around the idea of, of paid reviews and people um, people asking, creators being asking uh, brands to pay them for re- reviews, but also it's about brands offering. And there's always been a sentence in, or people have always said a phrase in emails, little brands have always said phrases in emails, hinting to stuff, but I've never really understood what they were hinting to. And then I was involved in this email chain where loads of people were CC'd in this email, not BCC'd, but CC'd in the email. And then uh, from this Chinese watch company, basically looking for people to make videos about their, their watches. And they had this like little phrase around what's required to make this happen or what do you need to make this happen? Or something around that, something leading on to what can we give you? Uh, mm-hmm. And I always took that as what, like uh, press shots or a loaner watch. But then that obviously means there's money here. You just need to say how much and we can sort it out. And one guy replied, I don't know who it was, but one guy replied saying, I need 250 pounds or dollars to, to make a video on this watch. And it, it's just annoying that that culture is still out there, that people are still, what's, uh, 250 quid is a lot of money and, and you can do stuff for 250 quid. But if you're thinking longevity, that's nothing. Mm-hmm. If Focus on building what you're building, and then 250 quid is going to be nothing for for what you're doing. I'm I'm not saying 250 quid can can feed people and that and that can do stuff. So I'm I'm not trying to downplay earning 250 quid, but what I'm trying to say is that the the impact of your credibility surely mm-hmm. that's worth more than 250 quid for one video. That's going to do nothing for your the the size of your content or, or channel. And so it, I'm I'm quite surprised that that stuff goes on. And people, when I say that I'm doing a video about such and such, and I make a, a point that this isn't sponsored by, people go into the comments, oh, you don't need to say it's not sponsored by. We know it's not sponsored by. I said, no, well, I have to say this isn't sponsored yeah, by the watch brand. Uh-huh. Because right. I want to make it, I, I don't want there to be any question that there's been no money involved or there's been no gifting or anything because this stuff still happens. And actually, I, I'm, I put a question out on Instagram the other day saying, I'm going to make a video around uh, working with brands. What questions do you have? Because I kind of want to address what concerns people have. And it was pretty much around two things. One, actually three things. One of the questions was, who's the most difficult brand to work with? Uh, the other question is, how much do you get paid to make mm. content on a certain brand? And I think uh, even after saying that, I don't get paid to make content. People still assume that. So it, it angers me that people are taking money to make uh, videos on supposed reviews when they're not reviews, they're, they're adverts. It angers me because that's uh, it's just fake. And it doubly angers me because that's now damaging what we all do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's quite obvious when we're being sponsored, or when I, I have brands sponsoring me, um, external brands like Chrono24 and Chronix and people like that, and you guys have eBay and, and things like that. We make it obvious and it's, it's, it's very plain when that happens. And so it's it's just annoying when these guys try and hide it and who dinky are, are a little bit naughty as it, as it i mean we all know that who dinky get paid by watch brands to talk about them but they when an article is an advert they have this tiny grayed out little word advert or advertisement in the top left hand corner of an article and it's never noticed it's, that oh exactly mm-hmm. and it's it's annoying that it's there if you're taking the time to gray this out you're trying mm-hmm. to hide the fact that this is an advert this isn't a watermark this isn't their copyright mark that's trying to uh, they don't want it to take away from the image or something mm-hmm. you're hiding the fact that this is an advert yet you're taking the time to say that it is an advert so you know you're trying to do something morally correct by saying this is an advert but then you're taking the action to hide it by making it gray on a mm-hmm. white background and so stuff like that i love hudinky uh, no, no hate towards hudinky no. but um it, I, I just think that oh, i don't know i've just been working so hard to try and be 
transparent impartial. and yeah. impartial yeah. exactly I've been trying so hard to be impartial yet there's still people in this um in this game that are messing up for all of us well you're right and uh, a blog to watch when they do sponsored content they actually tag it as being the author yeah. sponsored post yeah, it's very you clear. can tell straight away we've had quite a lot of smaller brands not even micro brands brands that are on kickstarter or you've never heard of maybe it's their first watch and they've got in touch to buy positive reviews and positive talk-ups and things like that. And we're like, well, no, because if we do something like that, especially with a brand we've never heard of, Rick's got a good mm-hmm. point that he'll bring up in a second about seeing physical products instead of renders. We can't mm-hmm. put our name behind saying, yeah, there's this new brand out of China. They're doing great things. They're on Kickstarter just now. Go and put your money into this. What happens if they disappear with people's money? What happens if there's no product or it's complete shit that they deliver? We are the ones that are going to be, well, held up to ransom for it by everybody that's put money in or believed in what we said before. And going back, all the podcasts mm-hmm. we've done, all the videos, when we do videos with brands like the Limited Edition or when we've had stuff from Oris, we don't lie about it. We say what we think and we've said bad things about watches from brands we love. And we've always yeah. maintained that sort of transparency. I've said nasty things about Arage right at the beginning. And then they sent me some stuff I really liked. And we built a good positive relationship. Same with Oris. Hated the ProPilot X, but Hang Hang Edition. Love it. And that's the way we do things. But other people but the, don't. The, the good thing about them. Oris is, is that they, they actually don't care what, what we think. And I've, I've spoken mm-hmm. to Rolf directly about this, the CEO of Oris. And one of my, uh, he was actually the first person to lend me a watch. And I said to him, do, do you need to see the video before it goes out? I said, no, I don't say so what you think. I, I don't yep. care. If, if you dislike it, we're not going to stop doing that watch just because you dislike it. Mm-hmm. We might listen to the feedback, but no, just just say what you think. Get get involved yep. with the watch. And this is why I like doing stuff with, with Oris because they, they really don't give a shit about I'm Sorry, are we allowed to swear? Yeah, yeah. No. I've sworn <laughs> like 18 times. <laughs> okay. yeah. they, uh, Oris don't give a shit about what, about what you're doing. They're, they're just passionate about what they're doing and they, they want to get their stuff out there. They're not going to get it right every time and they, they understand that. And also, they don't care about us us little people commenting on, on what they're doing. They, they no, just want, they to want get everyone to be truthful. Approach. Exactly. Well, and it's exactly. any exposure is better than no exposure whatsoever. And I don't know if that's the fact that they're a, an independent company. They're not owned by a big um, corporation and therefore they're a bit more free to do what they want. They don't have shareholders. Yep. I assume mm-hmm. they don't have shareholders. Don't no. Rick, what's the, the phrase that you use? Because it's quite a good one. Don't ask me questions. Don't quote me at me. I'll never remember. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, my experience of this was we had one brand in particular who contacted us it's a credible watch, but doesn't exist yet. And I went nine rounds with them saying, yeah, we'll do something. But we, my strategy is always, if we're reviewing a watch that is just a drawing, I really don't want to do anything with it no. until you actually send me one. And frankly, if it's a cheaper brand, if you're not able to send one, and it's not that I want to keep it because I wear a panorama, I'm not going to, I'm not going to wear it. <laughs> But the idea that you can actually send it and have enough backing behind you that if you don't get it back, then that's fine. Is actually my own litmus test to say, right, if you want us to review this, send us the watch. No obligation to return it. I mean, we will eventually. (laughs) But uh, (laughs) then that actually chases a lot of people. But the other slightly weird thing is that a lot of the small brands... (laughs) I don't know how to express this, and maybe you guys will have experienced this as well, is you kind of have to pick and choose who you engage with. So, Mm -hmm. for example, this particular brand paid for an article on a blog to watch, but then we're looking for free content from us with video or whatever, and they were going to pay here and get free. Now, I don't really have a problem with that so long as it's balanced out, because it is a little bit like biting the hand that feeds you. On the one hand, yes, Houdinki will cover your watch, but then occasionally these big brands are actually going to need to give them a bone because at the end of the day, they've got people to pay, mm-hmm. things to do, they've got costs. And it's trying to strike that balance of who is it worth engaging with as opposed to form a longer term relationship. So we've engaged with our as everybody knows, because we see in that a long term relationship. We like them, they like us, we've done things together. They know, and everybody who listens to us knows if we don't like it, we're gonna absolutely we're not gonna do the whole dinky route of we don't talk about what we don't like. And that's a phrase I I'm not a big fan of the idea that if we don't like it, we just won't talk about it. Mm-hmm. If you don't like it, then say you don't like it. Don't need to spend a whole show doing it. You don't need to be nasty to it. But it's okay to say we don't like it. 
And so long as brands that we deal with are happy to have the Scottish watches treatment, no matter what they put out, <laughs> then then we're happy to work with them, I suppose. So what was the phrase you thought I'd No, that was that one there. Um, I can't remember, it was that long ago now, Rick, and you put me to sleep. <laughs> but it was something along the lines of, basically, if it isn't a physical product and you can stand behind it by yeah. sending us the physical product to see in our hands, then there's no point in us speaking mm-hmm. about it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I think yeah. there's a challenge around keeping the product because a lot of these companies wouldn't be able to afford to send out yes. products just for people to keep. Uh, yeah, but I completely yeah. agree with with not necessarily talking about products, certainly from a, a new company, uh, if they haven't actually created the real thing. Yeah. Well, and I think that that's a that's a big issue because for us, we've had brands who want to reach out and, and want to do podcasts and things like that, but we don't do a pod like we won't do an interview with a brand that we've never held a watch, we've never seen the watch. Like exactly, I feel like we're we're very positive people. That's just that's our personality, you know. And I think that a lot of people take that as oh, you guys are just are sucking up whatever. No, it really is just the way that we are. We don't want to be negative, so we don't talk about like things that we're just going to be negative about because mm-hmm. it's just it's kind of a wasteful. And I feel like it gets very Debbie Downer. Mm-hmm. Um, so for us, you know, if we if we can't see the watch, we're not gonna we're not gonna dedicate a podcast to it or do an interview with it because we just we I feel like as enthusiasts we want to support things and brands that we would personally buy we would personally mm-hmm. own things like that um and you know just kind of doing anything for any brand it it just kind of gets old and I feel like you do lose some of your credibility at that point um well and, and the thing too is we we have at this point we have so many options like we right. we we're at the point that we can be choosy right. and we're going to exactly. choose the stuff that we like at the end of the day. Well, and just like our podcast reviews. Yeah, we get tons of watches in that we don't do the podcast reviews on because we may not be in love with them. We we, we do the podcast review. If we're going to dedicate, first of all, an hour to recording, all the time for editing, plus the time for social media and everything like that, that's, you know, realistically four to five hours of our lives. If we're going to do that, it's going to be for something that we personally like yeah. and mm-hmm. that we personally would wear so we're not doing a podcast review on every little thing but we were i mean we're open to to getting watches in whether we yeah, like them or not right like we, po- send it we post social media and things like that just because it's first of all it's content so who doesn't yeah. want you know any additional content especially for for all of us we you know we all know the situation some days it's like well hell what am i going to post on social media today like there's not much going on so to have your own pictures and have your own content is great but i mean we are above and beyond transparent about when something is paid for. And the only things that are ever paid for is just a, a 60 and 30 second advertisement on the podcast. It never affects our views. We don't even put um, sponsored episodes like, uh, for example, Rob from Topper Jewelers it is a, a podcast sponsor, we, you know, but we don't have him pay for episodes that we might be talking about a watch of his on because we don't mm-hmm. want people to to kind of misconstrue that we're only talking about it because he paid for that episode to sponsor it. Um, but yeah, I agree. Like the whole people doing shady things, it it kind of reflects poorly on all of us. And we have to work so much harder to be so much more transparent. Yeah. Well, we feel like a broken record sometimes where we're saying this is not sponsored. This is not sponsored. And then I look on Reddit or a forum and someone's trash talking us for, you know, being paid to talk about watches. And it's like, I need to change my password to talk about watches, guys. (laughs) Adrian's got a solution for content. It's a flow chart and it just, Arrows down in row X at the bottom, row X at the bottom, and another arrow and row X at the bottom. On, on that, on that, uh, and and on the the point about taking time to edit, uh, edit podcasts and things. I watched um, a Zoom call with a few uh, micro brands, uh, and they were talking about they're having a rant at content creators, and they were complaining about um, how it, it was aimed at YouTubers, but I, I guess it can be um, applied to everything. They were moaning about. YouTubers not talking about micro brands enough and not focusing on their brands and uh, other things other than Omega, Rolex, and, and all the big guys. And and they're saying it, it was kind of a bit of a plea and it was all a bit awkward. <laughs> and it was them basically saying, look, we're a business as well. We're company X and we're a business and we're trying to grow and we need your support. But that's not how this stuff works. If I was, if yeah. I had two videos to make and I could only make two videos... We're not their free marketing department either. Exactly. We're not their free marketing department. And also, we're a business as well. If I have two products, two videos, my, my products are videos. If I have two products to make, I'm going to make the one that's going to create the biggest return, whether that's financial or whether that's um, creating um, awareness of my channel. I'm going to focus on that. 
And if company X wants to send me a watch and I make a video on it, that's like me asking company X to make a watch for less than cost price. Good point. Or making yep. a watch out of gold, but selling it to me for the price of steel. It makes mm -hmm. zero commercial sense focusing on something that I have one less interest in, but two, commercially, was going to benefit me less than doing something else. And so it, it, it just seemed like a really awkward and backwards rant. And it's I, if they want people to talk about their product, they need to engage with people in the correct way and be good at marketing. There's a reason why um, I spoke about Baltic. There's a reason why I, I spoke about a few micro brands. And it's because they do something good. That's how the world works. Do something good and people will talk about it. Yeah, we get hit a couple of times recently by people saying things either on Instagram or on comments. And the first one was we did the eBay episode because Sophie Rindler that we deal with, um, she's on SWL and things like that, she was working with the guy that is now the head of luxury um, at mm. eBay. So we got him on the show. We're obviously based in the UK, but we've actually got more listeners in America than we do in the UK. It's, it's almost on parity. And because this new thing had come out in the States... We got him on, it was a bit of a coup, no one else had really gotten before, from what I can tell, and he was engaging, he was a watch enthusiast, a collector, he knew what he was talking about, he wears the same watch all the time, an Omega, James Bond, brilliant edition of the show, asked him all the really serious questions, came away really well, and we actually said in the show, this is not paid for, sponsored, or anything by eBay, people still sort of said, oh, but must have been, surely you guys did get compensated, and we didn't. Yeah. Sometimes we just create content because we like what we're talking about, y'all. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. You want to find out. Yeah, you speak to people I mean, you want to speak to. I think that that's been the coolest thing about this podcast is, you know, all of all of us, like mm -hmm. you guys, Adrian, everybody started out as an enthusiast. We didn't just start this just because, oh, watches are the cool thing. Let me, you know, let me dedicate six hours a day every day to doing this for, for something I'm not passionate about. We were all passionate about watches. So so when this started, it and even now, it's still it's so cool. We get to talk about and we get to handle things that before we would have never been able to. Yeah. And that's amazing. So I'm going to be excited to talk about these things. I'm going to want to talk about these things. And it doesn't mean that we're paid to do it. It just means that we're we're happy to do it. We, you know, we get to talk to people that we normally would have never talked to before. And on top of that, as enthusiasts, we get to educate people. We get to other people get to hear these conversations that they wouldn't have been able to have before. Um, yeah, I think there's just a lot of skepticism and criticism in general. I, I stopped listening to those comments when um, I did a video on the Apple Watch and someone mm -hmm. said, oh, Adrian's being paid by Apple. No. <laughs> you were like, no. I wish. <laughs> I, I would, yeah. I would, because Apple, Apple were really. Concerned I would make everyone aware if Apple was paying me. I'd be so <laughs> chuffed about that. And then I did a video about a Rolex once. Oh, it was announcing the the new Rolex Submariners, and someone says, "Oh, look, Adrian's on the the Rolex PR payroll." I was like, mm. Dude, I would tell you if Rolex were paying me to make. I would content. be bragging about it exactly all day, every day. That would be the intro. <laughs> Rolex has paid for this yeah. video. I'd be, I think I think that's the important factor is they would pay and we wouldn't care. <laughs> exactly. Them, we'd be like, yeah, really, hey, but Rolex pay for this. Well, and I think as we're all still relatively small channels, we, you know, we are passionate about reputations. Other other brands can be a little bit kind of in the gray and people don't really investigate that and look into that. But for us, if somebody makes a serious allegation about us not being transparent or us lying to people, that really hurts our brand significantly. Yep. So I think all of us, are, that's why being transparent and being so open is so important to all of us because we can't afford to be shady. We can't afford to cover things up um, and to take money for, for reviews or anything like that and not be open about it. Yeah, we get called out on Instagram by somebody, somebody that's actually not that bad with us usually, and they, we'd put a post up, I think it was a previous Christopher Ward, maybe a month or so ago, and we put the pictures up, and this guy just jumped into the comments, first comment, and he says, I thought you guys didn't give free PR to Christopher Ward anymore, and I'm like, what? I'm like, what are you talking about? And he says, yeah, you said um, you weren't going to give them any more free PR. And I said, we've never said this. I can categorically state that. No, you definitely have. And I said, go and find out what it was we did or what we said. And he was very quiet for about a day. Then he came back sheepishly and said, oh, no, no, it was um, it was G-Shock. And I went, no, no, we said G-Shock are the only company that's asked us to pay return postage. That's the only thing we've ever said. So you've got people confusing the situation, creating things, posting it online. And all it takes is 500, 1,000, even 10 people reading that to get a bad thought in their head mm -hmm. about what you're doing. And it ruins everything that you're putting your time and effort into. Yeah. yeah. The other side of it is, is, is there's always going to be people who are upset with what you do. Um, I've had my fair share of, of hate. And I think the big thing... You Mostly for me and I apologize. <laughs> 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 
But I, I he think... has the biggest grin, by the I way, know. because he just made a joke that we all laughed about. Yeah. He's like, yeah. It's, it's, yes. it's part of my 10 step, 10, 10 step program. I need to make amends. So, Adrian, I'm sorry for all those Bremont comments that I made on your on your, your now deleted video. <laughs> I, need, I need to do something about Bremont again. Um, <laughs> I can't right, sorry, Adrian. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I, I think the whole, the whole thing is about um, just being confident about what you're doing. It, it, if people are doing shady stuff, then and we know who the shady people are in this industry, and that that comes out. There's always going to be people who are going to talk crap about what you do. Uh, but as long as you're sure about what you're doing is right, then. Well, there's other things as well that, that happen behind the scenes that people might not know about. For instance, we, as in Scottish Watches and Tenant 2, we're going to be doing an interview with somebody and... You guys recorded it already. It's coming out soon, I believe. And we got approached by the same people and we asked the question, uh, right, okay, that sounds fine. Yep, understand who you are, et cetera, et cetera. Um, are you speaking to anybody else at the same time? And they were honest and went, yeah, yeah, we've, we've just recorded a show with 10 and 2, but we're also recording a show with these other four people in the same week. And instead of us shitting on people, we actually said, listen, we can't do that. Um, there's, there's absolutely no way we would do that because we get on very well with at least two or three of these people you've mentioned and it's not going to be fair because we might be maybe the day before and then people aren't going to listen to their show because they're going to think it's just a repeat. So I think there's a good bunch of camaraderie, not just between us within Hotix, but Jody at Just mm-hmm. One More Watch and loads of other people within the podcasting, the Instagram and the YouTube scene. And that's the way it should be. We're all enthusiastic, we're all interested in the same thing and we're doing it out of passion. Like Carlton says, mm-hmm. you don't spend six hours a day replying to messages, answering DMs, being a free consultant for people on what they should buy mm-hmm. and how much they should spend and is this a good collection or do you think this is worthwhile buying because in a year's time it'll have lost money. All those questions that constantly come in, the emails we get, the DMs, Unless we were getting paid a full-time wage, a whole load of shitload of money for it, there's absolutely no reason we would do it. We do it because we have passion, we enjoy it, and we're coming up for episode 200. The girls are at episode 100 probably within a few weeks. Adrian, you've been yeah. doing this, what, four plus years? You know, if we were doing it for money, we'd be... been six episodes. In six episodes. <laughs> but if we were doing it for money, we would all be millionaires by now. I've been doing it three years. Just, just pretend yeah. it's four. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should. I think we need to union. I think the solution is we need to unionize. Mm-hmm. Um, unionize the watch podcast world. We need to unionize. Mm-hmm. So there we go. Uh, right to rule. Any more rants before we finish up? Then I feel like yeah, that's serious. Took a very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we're pretty maxed out on rants. That was a good one, though. <laughs> that actually, was that was a. Really I think it's something one. that needed to be said because mm-hmm. there are there's lots of. I was actually copied in on that email chain that Adrian was talking about. We were apparently we're not. Oh, that we're important. not cool enough. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I was copied in as in somebody, Jody from Just One More Watch, who sends me all the back channel chat. He sent me the screen oh, captures okay. of it, just to drop him in the shit a little bit. Um, and I read it, and Adrian. Scottish thing. It's a Scottish thing. And Adrian was the only person in that whole email chain that stood up after the other mm. person said, If you pay me 250 bucks, I will do a positive review. Adrian's the only person that stood up and actually shouted and said, that is wrong. That shouldn't be done. And that's what's going to ruin this enthusiast community. Good when job. When we say stood up, what we really mean is he kind of lazily stretched out behind himself, laid back, had another sip of his coffee and went, eh, whatever. <laughs> he responded in all caps. That's what <laughs> <laughs> I was civilised. So what else is happening, guys? What have Good you stuff. guys got coming out? You've got episode 100. You've just did your year's anniversary. Yeah. What's happening? Uh, there's there's a video at some point in time <laughs> that, will, <laughs> that will come out. Uh, no, actually, I think this weekend it'll it'll be coming out. So, all right, you said that. I know we've, we've said that at least this three comes times. Out, this will this come out weekend. after the fact, this, so it doesn't oh, matter. Supposedly, but Jenny was supposed to go out after the fact too, <laughs> but it didn't. No, it's it's nearly done. It's nearly done. Uh, so, do you want to say what it is? Yeah. So that you're then committed that you have to have it out oh. within the twelve days before this is published. Well, me. Are you that brave? <laughs> Bear in mind, yeah, this mean, goes out in about four days. Four right. Days? Four days. Okay. okay. Yeah, I feel I feel pretty good about that. Okay. Come on then. It's, come on then. Uh, it's, Go on, then. it's kind of a, a deep dive into my Rolex Explorer and Catlin's Speedmaster, which is pretty much our daily go-to watches. Yeah. No clickbait whatsoever involved there. <laughs> a, ro- a Rolex versus Explorer YouTube video will never catch on. <laughs> no, never. What are you talking about? Adrian's taking notes. His will be out tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to lend you a Speedmaster and an Explorer 1, Adrian? Uh, you can rustle something quickly together. <laughs> we're, ta- uh, we're taking notes. Yeah. We're taking notes from Adrian. We're trying. 
It's good. <laughs> and Adrian, what have you got coming up? Oh, gosh. Uh, Apple Watch video will be already up. I'll have a video about working with brands. And then we're going to do a slightly off topic. I want to start introducing off topic videos. I want Bark and Jack to start being a bit more. Ponzi. Ponzi. Yeah, Ponzi could be. That would be a way of looking at it. <laughs> mm-hmm. I want to do. Um, I want to talk about my Fuji X100. One of my cameras, my favourite camera. Ooh, nice. Oh, because your camera videos are really popular on your channel. <laughs> yeah, no, they they die, but it's just something I like to talk about. <laughs> the thing about camera videos is that it allows me to try new techniques of of videoing. Um, so that's that's kind of the main thing. I have this place in Scotland that I want to go to and make a video on, and there's no way it'd be weird to do a watch because. It would just it has no real connection to watches, whereas I could make it about landscape photography yeah. uh, or nature photography rather. Landscape sounds like some weird anorak going out and train spotting. Yeah, not just a good movie. <laughs> Excellent, Rick. What are you up to? A uh, I don't know. Which watches are you not returning this week? <laughs> oh, not returning the Orage this week. The Orage <laughs> uh, they've they've done something interesting. So, but we'll talk about that probably on SWL or later on with their new K2 movie. Oh yeah, that that is out today, but they're not actually launching it with their watch. What they're doing is they're pitching it to eight micro brands and saying, if you want to have the ability to buy this at OEM prices, come and speak to us, mm-hmm. design a watch around it. And there's 32 different variations of it in terms of three-hander, two-hander, power reserve, GMT. So it's quite an impressive... I'm interested to see whether it works. Mm-hmm. I think it will, uh, but it's quite an interesting approach. You know what their, their business makeup is? That doing stuff like that must cost huge amounts of money. They have yeah. reserves. Yeah, and, and is loaded. Oh, really? It's just uh, personal <laughs> finance. <laughs> Good stuff. What have we got coming out? Right. Oh, we've got the watch Ooh. box thingy, haven't we? Is that happening? When's that happening? Yes. Is that happening? Yes, yeah, so we have a minute. We haven't really told anybody about this yet, but... Oh, are you guys talking about it now? now? When does the first one come out? Don't I mean, know. you just said Watchbox, would, so... We have recorded a ah. mini-series with Watchbox. But there was a f**k-up. There was a Catlin catastrophe. Is. <laughs> oh, no. no. It's a versus I battle. I had audio file, okay? It just wasn't good audio. Yeah. <laughs> we had, oh, that's what we have. We had, an audio, we had an audio file of Josh Thanos whistling. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, after recording an episode, but we'll not say less about that. So we have a series coming up with them. It's basically uh, watch battles, watch box versus Scottish watches, choosing the perfect, for reasons that will be explained at some stage, the perfect 14 watch collection. <laughs> <laughs> 14 uh, watches. It was a girl that came up with that number. So, I feel uh, like that Caroline. we were supposed to know. Was that an inside joke then? No, no, no. no, no, no it no, really no, was. No, it genuinely is. Genuinely oh, okay. is the uh, marketing director at Watchbox conversation with me. That's what we decided to do, a 14 watch collection. This is why I don't usually let Rick do conversations because we end up with bloody 14 watch collections <laughs> and shit. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so there we go. So that's going through all the big brands you can think of plus uh, some of the... You know, the De- Debethunes and these kind of guys. Got the usual suspects really practical on in a 14 watch collection. Yeah. Super practical. Any 14 watch collection has to have at least one Debethun. It's just the rules. Is. <laughs> I, I don't make the rules. I don't make the rules. I'm like the moderator on your presidential debates. I don't make the rules. The candidates made the rules, and this was the rules they made. <laughs> the man that wears so, one uh, watch right, all the time. And, well, so speaking <laughs> of wears one watch all the time, but we know you have a pretty awesome watch collection. What is like the most outrageous, like, like over the top watch in your collection, and don't say those swatch flying whatever thingy images. It's probably it's well, no, it probably isn't them. I've forgotten about them. It probably is the gorilla. <laughs> okay, it probably is the mm. flying hours. That's okay. probably the one. I've got an IWC perpetual calendar, which isn't really outrageous, but is quite a special watch because of when it was made and it was the original mono pusher perpetual calendar. I don't think there's anything else. I've got a, a couple of Kickstarter ones which are a bit weird and wonderful. The Horizon uh, Watch. Horizons Watch. The Horizon Watch is quite... Uh, it doesn't really work. That's why it failed as a Kickstarter, but it's an impressive idea. So, so there we go. Maybe one day I'll do a review of them all. And then Never. the X will fly. Never. Rick, we had a lockdown for about six months and you didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> true. It's true. No. What the chance is. Exactly. Oh, well, take us away. Okie doke. Right. Well, check out all the channels. Adrian, where can they find you? It's Bark and Jack everywhere. Bark and Jack YouTube. Bark and Jack Instagram. At 10 and 2, where do we find all of you guys? So we are at on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at 10 and 2 Media. And that's spelled T E N N 2 N. Difficult. 
Um, and then do you regret that? <laughs> no, I no. Love, I still love it. I think a lot of people look it up with one N and not not really putting together that we're from Tennessee, and that's why there's two N's. Um, Ricky, make a note. We need to register that one. I think somebody has it. <laughs> somebody already has it. <laughs> we yeah. try, I was right, going okay. to just to go ahead and link it over, but somebody already has it. Um, and then uh, yeah, so our website is www.tenandtwo.com. Cool. And podcast, search 10 and 2. Yeah. What can we expect from the Tennessee Volunteers this weekend? Win, loss, um, draw? No, I, we're <laughs> playing, I think this weekend is Auburn or Georgia, and it's going to suck so bad. Um, good, good. We play? Yeah. Another American Anyways. sport I don't care about. And you can find <laughs> us uh, all on Scottish Watches. So as Georgia. we say on the Scottish Watch side of things, goodbye from us. No, it's not. Say that again. Oh, we say. That's, That's all we say. <laughs> I say it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from all of them. Goodbye. Bye, Bye y'all.